Hey, I'm curious, do you have an Etsy store? Y'all should sell that on Etsy. I really wanted to see if you guys have an Etsy store. Bro, do you even Etsy? Hmm. You should put this on Etsy. So do you guys have an Etsy page or? Hey, Jenny and Davis, do you guys have an Etsy shop? Do y'all have an Etsy store? Good question, Gary. Do you have an Etsy store? Oh my gosh, we get this question all, all the, the time. time. And we can't be the only ones, but we got this question enough from our friends and family that we decided, hey, let's look into this. Let's see if Etsy fits our yeah. business model or if we could adapt our business model to fit Etsy. And spoiler alert, it doesn't exactly fit our business model, but we're going to share the 10 things that we learned kind of pro and con list yeah. style. And you may disagree with some of our pros and cons, but that's okay. You might have a different business model than us, but mm -hmm. hopefully our opinions kind of give you some sort of a reference point for whether or not you should open an Etsy store. Yeah, so for sure. with that being said, let's get started. No, we're going this way. This way. No, this way. This way. I'm editing the video. <laughs> we're going this way. Okay, so our first pro of having an XE account is the ease of use. Honestly, they make it really, really simple to sell your products to the point where you could snap a picture of what you created with your phone, upload it, decide what price you wanna sell it for, and then Etsy does all the work for you. You don't have to design your own website. You don't have to figure out how to make everything secure, how to put a checkout into a website. It is literally as easy as that. You upload what you wanna sell, put a description, put a price, and Etsy's gonna take care of the rest for you. You don't even need to build your own audience because they've got an audience that they're automatically just gonna serve your stuff to. So that's pro number one. It's just that it is extremely, almost mind-numbingly easy to use. And that's the point. They want it to be that easy. Do you have an Etsy store? All right, so the first con that we have about Etsy is that there are a ton of active sellers. So many, in fact, just in 2018, there were 2.1 million active sellers on Etsy. That is an enormous amount of competition. And normally that would be a bad thing if everybody was selling a unique product, but a lot of the products nowadays with CNCs and everything else, once you publish your idea, a lot of people can start to copy it. And that's another thing you'll see on Etsy is that you'll click on a product and then you'll scroll all the way down past the add to cart button because they've got a whole bunch of things that say, oh, you might be interested in this. And it's a ton of other different sellers because Etsy, only wants people to check out. Etsy doesn't really care if the users check out with your product or another person's product. They're all the same to Etsy, unless you pay for your posts to be bumped up near the top. But that's how you can lose a lot of sales on Etsy is the customer scrolls down at, to the bottom of your ad and they see a whole bunch of other things like it and maybe they like one a little bit better than yours and they click on that and then boom, they're gone and you've lost the sale. So there's a lot of competition and unless you're doing something extremely unique that really nobody else can do or a certain style that nobody else can replicate, then Etsy may be kind of a tough battle for you to try and sell something because there's a ton of people selling almost identical products all across Etsy. Also, I mean, even if somebody has a product that's not quite as nice as yours, but the price is a lot lower because it's easier for them to produce than however you make yours, the average customer is not really going to know woodworking enough or crafts enough to know the difference between the two and they're going to buy the cheaper one. So you can lose a lot of sales that way too. So just be aware, unless you're doing something extremely unique, it's really kind of a tough gig on Etsy, unless you're bringing your own follower base from Instagram or YouTube to your Etsy store. That's a way that I've seen you can get around that is if you've got people sold out to you as a brand, then they're willing to spend a little bit extra money or not click on some of the other products because they want to support you specifically. Okay, so now discussing pro number two. Have you ever had a product that you created and maybe you were really excited about it? You thought it was like the coolest thing ever, it was super convenient, but you didn't know what other people were gonna think about it or maybe how it was gonna sell. So Etsy makes that really, really easy. You can just throw whatever you created up on Etsy and see how it does. See how many people look at it, see how many people buy it. And if after a couple of weeks or a month or so, you see, oh, maybe this isn't doing so well, you can take it off and move on to a different idea. And then on the flip side, if you put a product on there that maybe you don't think is gonna do well, and it just takes off and it is extremely popular, that's gonna let you know, hey, you've, you found a winner and you better figure out a way to batch these out. So that's really, really good about Etsy is you can figure out how your products are gonna do really easily in front of a large audience. And really without investing too much time in production, you really only have to make one or two prototypes. Hey guys, just wondering if you have an Etsy page and if you don't, are you planning on starting one? 
All right, another thing that we don't like about Etsy, and this is con number two, is that you don't learn traditional sales skills. And what I mean by that is you don't get to read the body language of the customer whenever they're scrolling through the page, right? It's sort of a passive way to make money, which is all well and good, but if you're trying to grow and learn how to be a better salesperson, then Etsy's really not the place for you. And that's kind of what we want to focus on, is we want to focus on the personal aspect of making deals and closing sales face to face. And while it's important to learn how to take good pictures of your product and write good copy and make it attractive and stand out amongst a bunch of other similar products, that's not really the type of sales that Jenny and I really wanted to focus on. So that's another reason that we decided not to open an Etsy store. All right, so pro number three, if you create smaller items that can be shipped really easily and it's pretty cheap to ship them, you're gonna do really, really well on Etsy because you're gonna be able to make a bunch of stuff, batch it out and ship it all over the country and all over the world if you want. It's really hard to be on Etsy with larger projects. So like for us, we make a lot of larger furniture and would be really, really expensive to ship. And you'll see in some people's Etsy descriptions, they'll say, oh, pick up in this area or pick up in the local area. And that is instantly just limited how many people can purchase your product because they don't live near you. It's, it's essentially like you've turned it into Craigslist. And if you wanted to sell your desk or your bed frame on Craigslist, you would have put it on there and not Etsy. So if you make smaller items that are easy to ship, Etsy is awesome for you. Cause that's exactly the kind of thing the customers on Etsy are looking for. Oh my God. You need to put this on Etsy. All right, con number three is we really didn't like the fact that Etsy takes about 8% of your final sale price from you. So the first 5% comes from just, that's Etsy's fee. They charge you to list a product for a couple of weeks and then they charge you another 5% of every sale that you make. All right, so let's say, let's just play pretend real quick. Let's say that this is a cutting board that you're selling on Etsy. Okay, it's 20 inches long. Okay, and again, just play along. We're making the math easy here. So let's say you've got a cutting board that's 20 inches long and it's $20. So one inch represents $1 of your cutting board. Okay, so what Etsy is gonna do is they're gonna take 5% of your total sales price. And if you sell it for $20, that means they're gonna take one inch of your entire cutting board. Etsy takes this much and you're left with this much. Now, because your buyer used an online form of payment, Etsy's gonna charge you another 3% for that charge of $20, which is gonna be about 0.6 of an inch. So we're just gonna round that off to what, like five eighths. So we'll cut off another five eighths of your cutting board. So again, this is how much money Etsy is taking off of your cutting board. It's certainly just objectively not a whole lot of the cutting board, and this may not be a big deal to you, but for us, when we, like, when we try to sell projects that are a lot of money, like let's say that this was a $2,000 bench or something like that for a golf course. Imagine if Etsy took 8% of 2,000. How much is that? That's like $150. That's, that starts to be quite a bit of money left on the table, and especially if a golf course is gonna buy, what, they want a bench on every hole? and they wanna buy 18 benches to outfit their entire golf course, you're looking at a lot of money left on the table. So I'd much rather negotiate that deal myself and not have to worry about having to pay Etsy. That's just kind of the deals that we like to do. So may not be a big deal to you uh, to sacrifice this much to have access to Etsy's customer base, but it was for us. I was wondering, do you guys have an Etsy? All right, so pro number four, if you've ever been worried about taking online payment from your customers, like how am I gonna store their credit card information? How do I get enough security settings set up on my own personal website that people aren't gonna be sketched out to pay me? Do I pay the bank? Do I pay the credit card? How does that work? How do I set it up properly? Am I gonna get taxed the right way? Do I have to set up the tax information? Does the bank do that? If you've ever asked any of those questions, Etsy has got you covered. They take almost every single type of online payment. It's safe, it is secure. People are not gonna be scared to give you their money. They know exactly what they're dealing with. Etsy knows how to do everything correctly in the background because they've got all their legal stuff figured out so that you don't have to. So Etsy makes it super simple. You can take payments properly. You don't have to worry about somebody not getting your payment or the right people not getting your payment. You can be fully confident that your customers are gonna pay the right amount to the right people and you're not gonna have to worry about it. 
So con number four, Etsy has a really constrictive email policy. They really don't want you emailing your customers. And I get it, there's a lot of spam out there, they're passing laws all the time on what you can and can't do with email marketing. But if you're someone who wants to just notify previous customers that you got a new product, or that you've got a product back in stock, Etsy does not want to make it very easy for you to do that. You can email people that are interested if an item is back in stock, if they put their name on a waiting list, but you even have to pay for one of their higher tiers to have access to that function. And for us, at this point, we were honestly kind of leaning away from starting an Etsy store, but this was just another thing that we thought, Ugh, okay, so Etsy doesn't even do email marketing for us. So look up the laws in your country because they're changing all the time, but we wanted a way to contact our previous customers just to let them know about new products, let them know about discounts, let them know about our blog posts, stuff like that. And I think part of that is because Etsy doesn't want you to email them about a new product and then move them away from the Etsy platform. So that might be a little bit of a reason why they don't have email integration into their software, but that's, that's just another thing about Etsy that you've got to work out for yourself. So if you want to do a lot of email marketing or follow up after you're with your customers, then Etsy's really not a good way to do that. Okay, so pro number five, which is probably the biggest pro and the number one reason that people like to use Etsy to sell their products. It is because of the huge user base you already have a customer base set up by using Etsy on its own. You don't have to go out and find your own customers. You don't have to go out and create some huge online audience, like starting a YouTube channel or an Instagram and attracting people that way. Your Etsy is essentially saying, here, we have these people for you. We will give them to you. They have so many users that in the last six months, 183 million people have used Etsy. In case you're wondering, that is more than the population of Russia. So there is no worry that people are going to see your product. You are going to have eyeballs on your product. People will want to buy it. And you had to do very, very little work to get that customer base. That's essentially, that's what you're paying for is their huge user base. All right, and con number five, the very last one, and this is honestly the, the biggest one for us. It's really hard to forecast or get a good grasp of how many products you're gonna to need to make to keep up with supply and demand on Etsy. Let's say for example that you have a post on Instagram that goes super viral. Let's say you make wooden necklaces or something like that and you get a picture or a video that just explodes on Instagram. All of a sudden, you've got hundreds of orders, you're out of stock of everything that you sell and it's gonna be another couple weeks until you can get anything back in stock. This is a nightmare for a small business that's ready to explode. In business, they call this the hug of death. You always want to be prepared for a hug of death. Whether that's a news story or social media or your mom tells somebody who knows somebody else, who knows somebody at CNN, then all of a sudden you're on the news. You never know what can happen. That's one of the exciting things about business, but you always want to be prepared for that hug of death. And the way that we like to do business is we like to keep a rotating book of clientele that we can just reach out to or re can reach out to us and we make continued sales. It's just the, the way that we like to operate. Etsy doesn't really lend itself to that, especially if you're doing a side hustle. Your time is very limited on how much you can spend on each project. If you're spending half of your time trying to support an Etsy shop and the other half of your time trying to support custom builds, a lot of times it's just too much to handle and your business is going to collapse under the weight of all the pressure. So. Again, for us, this was kind of a con, but it might not be for you. If you like to just batch out hundreds of little wooden necklaces and then just keep them in a giant pile in a spare bedroom, go for it. To the average person, Etsy is the only like window they have into the maker community, mm -hmm. which it's a really big part of the community, but it's not everything. Those are the 10 things we learned when we researched opening an Etsy shop. It's why we don't have one. Hopefully we presented something in a new light that you hadn't thought of before. And hopefully that makes your decision way easier on whether or not you're actually gonna start one because who knows, it might work out great for you. That might be like the number one way you make income. Let us know in the comments if we missed anything. Was there anything that we didn't know about Etsy? Was there anything mm -hmm. that you know you think that we left out? Let us know. We wanna make this video a good resource for other people that come and find it. So make the comments a helpful place. And thank you to all of our friends who contributed to this awesome intro and some of the clips in the middle and the outro. You guys are so awesome. We weren't even expecting this to turn out to like a big thing. We just kind of threw it out there. Yeah, I was blown away with the number of people that responded and said yes, they'd be willing to help out. This is such an awesome community and we just yeah. want to thank you for being a part of it. Uh, right here, we're going to have a video on our Ferris wheel of sales. This is kind of our explanation of how we like to do business. When I was talking earlier about our rotating book of clientele, this is, this is where we make most of our money. And then right over
then over here, we're gonna have another video explaining our tax structure. How do we deal with taxes? That's something that everyone needs to consider when you do any sort of online or brick and mortar business. You need to just understand, hey, you gotta set aside a little bit of money for taxes. Should I pay a CPA? Should I not pay a CPA? These are all things you need to consider. And this video right here covers everything we feel comfortable sharing our experiences about. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the like button. It really helps the channel out a lot, helps it share to more people. Turn that notification bell on so you never miss a video coming from us. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you again see you soon. Later.